Hi everyone, I'm Pat Prokop and I'm in the Heavenly Backyard Garden and I'm going to be entering in a new chapter in my quest for astrophotography and the new chapter will be within this box. Welcome to Heavenly Backyard Astronomy. As I mentioned chapters, let's go to the first chapter. The first chapter was a long time ago. It was the uh, uh, awareness and education. Now, when I was about eight or nine, my uncle gave my brothers and me a small refractor telescope. This got my interest in astronomy. I remember in the cold winter days back in Detroit, looking up at the moon through that telescope and then also seeing the planets Jupiter and Venus. As a little kid, I was amazed at what I was able to see, and I was very interested as what was out there. I even tried to look at the planet Saturn and I could barely detect the rings. That's when I was nine years old. Education was the next important tool. Now, I wanted to become a broadcast meteorologist. Uh, so through high school and college, I, I took all the sciences and mathematics. I majored in physics in, in, in college at Murray State University so I can go into graduate school of meteorology with physics as the background. But I also took a lot of astronomy classes as well. While in Flint, Michigan, I was at a community college and I was able to take astronomy classes there and our class meetings were in a planetarium, the Robert T. Longway Planetarium. Within there, I, I took uh, solar uh, astronomy, studying the planets, and then the uh, stellar astronomy, studying the stars and the universe around. And then beyond that, at Murray State University, I took astrophysics and also astrophotography. Back then, we used film. Uh, what's film, you say? Uh, no digital cameras back then. This was 1973 and 74 when I took the astrophotography. And, and, and we processed images of Jupiter on uh, 35 millimeter slides. We even developed our own slides. From there, the quest went into chapter two the telescopes. So chapter two is the acquisition of the telescopes. My first telescope uh, wasn't until 2014. Of course, I had the one in 1957 or so, 58 when I was a kid. But in 2014, I bought my first telescope. That was this, this Lestron 6-inch SE Next Star. And with that, I started to take my first venture into astrophotography. The next telescope was the a big 11 inch Edge HD and that opened up a new world of astrophotography for me. That was my retirement gift to me uh, as I had just retired from working 38 years in television broadcasting and I wanted to do more on the astrophotography. So that's a telescope uh, to work with. Now keep in mind the, uh, the Celestron uh, 6 inch SE and the Celestron 11 inch Edge HD are both F10 telescopes. My next telescope was the one I really should have started with, and that's the um, Orion ED80T uh, carbon fiber CF. Uh, that one is an F6 telescope. That is a much easier scope to a star align, to guide, and to track, and it gives you a great wide field of view. So uh, if you're gonna be starting with a telescope, I suggest a refractor telescope, with an F ratio of uh, F7 or lower, F6 is what this is, or you can get an F5, or even a reflector telescope, um, usually those are less than F5s, right around F4, F3. That gives you a much wider field of view. It's a lot easier to track and star align with those telescopes. And then after that, I acquired the, uh, the astrograph, the Maxutoff Newtonian 190 millimeter astrograph telescope and that was an f5.2 well that is an f5.2 telescope and that also gives me some great images uh, but still i like this glass telescope here the ed80 it's a wonderful telescope at that so chapter three in my quest is the cameras now my very first camera was this uh, canon t2i uh, it's a one-shot color camera of course and it fits right into the back of the telescope and with that you can get some great photography uh, then i graduated i wanted to get a, um, a a dedicated astrophotography camera and i ended up buying the altair hypercam 183c now this is not cooled it's only fan cooled it's not thermally electrically cooled camera but it, it's also is a great camera uh, and it got me going into the digital version of astrophotography then, 
After that, I got another Canon. That was the Canon T7i, but I had that one modded, meaning that I had it uh, modified uh, so that it'd be more sensitive to the infrared and the red uh, lights of the heavens, particularly for the nebulae, um, the uh, uh, red colors show up vividly, more vividly with the modded type camera. I had that done by Hap Griffin up in South Carolina. And then I graduated to the Hypercam 294C, which is currently on the uh, Orion ED80, and that is a ProTech. Uh, the tech meaning TEC, thermally electric cooled, and from there I can cool down the chip temperature to a, a, a much colder temperature and in the hot humid summers here in Savannah you certainly need that because the noise level as the warmer the chip temperature is the more noise is generated inside the camera. This cools it down and you get a much better and cleaner picture from that. Also in chapter three with the cameras involves steep learning curves. And not only the cameras, but the tracking mounts themselves. I, the uh, the uh, CGEM, the Celestron German Equatorial Mount that came with the Celestron 11 inch HD. And then I also bought a smaller uh, AVX mount, which I use mostly for the uh, uh, ED80. Uh, but I, now I have this on the CGEM mount. And then I acquired the um, Celestron CGX mount, which has a heavier payload capacity. And as I was adding more and more equipment to my Edge HD telescope, the 11 inch, it started to gain more and more weight. And I needed a little bit stronger um, mount to help guide and track the heavens with, with the, uh, all the extra weight on the scope itself. And then came the software that goes along with it. Oh, the software, uh, Photoshop, learning Photoshop. I've been learning Photoshop and I'm still learning Photoshop. Deep Sky Stacker, an excellent uh, stacking program, but there's a learning curve that goes along with that. Pix and Sight is another stacking program and a, a, a uh, image enhancement type program. And I only know maybe, maybe what? no more than 10% of that compa uh, capability of that program. Uh, Pix and Sight is just loaded with all kinds of uh, great enhancement tools. Um, for the, uh, uh, the uh, Canon, or also if you use a Nikon, uh, there's a great piece of software called Backyard EOS. And uh, it is wonderful for using the, uh, uh, the Canon cameras uh, for your astrophotography. You have SharpCap Pro, which is excellent for planetary. It's also very good for uh, deep space objects as well. And then now comes NINA, Nighttime Imaging in Astronomy. Uh, that is a fantastic program for uh, DSO, uh, deep space objects, and it automates everything and puts it all together. And there's other programs as well that, uh, that others have been using. Astrophotography Tool is one of them. Uh, Sequence Generator Pro is another one. Those are all very similar to what Nina is doing as well. That is chapter three. Chapter four is about to begin. Going into chapter four, before I bought the final piece of equipment that, needed, that I needed for this, I had to get uh, some a, a additional uh, accessories to work the, uh, the system. And to give you a clue, uh, I had to uh, acquire these filters a blue filter, a green filter, and a red filter. And then a filter wheel to hold those filters so that I can change them. Uh, and this is the filter wheel itself. And the camera will attach right into here. And then you can change the filters to whatever color you want or whatever type of filter you want, such as a uh, uh, IR UV cut filter or a luminance filter. Then I also bought another filter, uh, automatic filter changer uh, for uh, broadband. So I can use uh, H-alpha, uh, oxygen-3, and sulfur-2 type filters with this. So what's in the box? That's the next question. This is chapter four. Can you already figure out what it is? Well, yeah, it, yeah I, guess, I bet you do. I bet you know it. So here is the box right here from High Point Scientific. And uh, let's open her up. And, uh, okay, this is a key ring. Can you see it? In the shape of a camera. Interesting. We got some paper in here, packing paper, and a box. And look what's in the box. It is the AS, the ZWO ASI 
1600 mm ProTech camera. This is chapter four. I'm going into broadband astronomy. So let's open up the box, see what's inside. And of course you got your USB um, two connector cable and a USB two connector cable. There's two of them. And then the USB three connector cable. Um, you have a two inch to uh, one and a quarter inch adapter. Of course you have the two inch adapter. What else do you have in here? Uh, a ring for an adapter. More adapter rings for certain fittings. And uh, here we go. The camera is right here in this little carrying case. It's got that fresh new smell. And there it is. The ZWO ASI 1600mm monochrome ProTech camera. Chapter 4, here I come. Well, thanks for watching and I hope uh, you get some information out of this. And also I invite you to continue to watch my videos and I'm thanking all my subscribers because I am approaching that magic number of 1,000 subscribers. I'm only 20 shy right now, about 980 subscribers. So please hit that sub subscribe button at the bottom of the video, uh, at the bottom of the page, and ring the little bell so you'll be notified when I upload new videos. And I got a feeling I'm going to be uploading some videos very shortly because of this new camera. I want to get some first light video to show you and to share with you. So. I usually say, you know, unless you need rain, clear skies, everyone. We just had a rain. I had to wait an hour and a half to start filming this video because the rain wouldn't stop. Uh, but it's extremely humid out here right now. So at the moment, I don't need rain. But if you do need rain, you know, that's good. Uh, but if you don't need rain, clear skies, everyone.